like, like no. fuck we we spend on shopify to host it because we have the plus with all the apps and everything we spend over a hundred fuck it, it probably a hundred and forty thousand dollars a year that's insane on our website <coughs> okay subscription uh subscription issues what do we run into uh let's break mm. down Let's break down how we're running subscriptions now and the fact that I got your email yeah. yesterday yeah. and that was subscriptions that have been canceled or, or that, not canceled but put on pause or something or didn't go through. That was one, essentially, yeah. So for context for anyone listening, the email I forwarded over to Dan was a notification that we got for, I didn't count the exact number, it looked like about 50 orders or yeah. so that tried to go through for the subscriptions and how subscriptions work is people sign up for a product, they get a discount, whatever, and then they get sent monthly and there was approximately 50 orders that weren't able to go through and mm. it's not like they just remove that product and process everything else they put the whole order on hold yeah right and is so there an option to allow them to do that saying hey we don't have this product on on uh in stock do you do you want to pull it out and proceed with your order maybe i can look into that yeah we should look into that uh let's see here wait a reminder look, yeah look into um removing item I'm pretty sure there is. There's got to be. Yeah. The issue is, is that a lot of these third-party apps, Connor, you don't, you don't have to necessarily include this, but no, just, I think it's, right. I, th I think so. If, um, it, if it's relevant, this is an e-commerce relevant. That's true. Yeah. A, a lot of e a lot of these third-party apps, there's like they're very good for what they do, but they often have like these bugs where like okay they'll say okay yeah it's supposed to work this way but when it's actually going it doesn't end up working that way so what i'm finding is that we're actually better off to not trying to get super complex when we're working with third-party apps or even like custom developed apps and yeah. just keeping it very simple because that's yeah. when i find less issues do you think that it could up. be become issues when we are introducing apps and they're not communicating properly that for with sure. everything else yes. into the site that for sure yeah. is, is one of the main things is that um, like we have so many apps that not only communicate directly with our Shopify store, but then have to communicate with each other and the code that's on every single page. Mm -hmm. So like changing one thing can often lead to like it fucking up something else yeah. that we didn't even like, like fuck, we, we spend on Shopify to host it. Cause we have the plus with all the apps and everything we spend over a hundred fuck it, it probably $140,000 a year That's insane. on our website yeah. just to host it with all the apps that we pay for all that shit. I mean, that's it's, it's worth it. But. Yeah, and that's not even considering uh, the fees that they take and all that kind of shit. We probably spent two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars over there, which is fucking nuts mm -hmm. when you think of it. But uh, <clears throat> so, so that's a lot of revenue loss. So we obviously have to figure out. So, so the strategy moving forward, yes, is so to reduce the number of SKUs that are being offered for subscriptions, so that we correct. can slowly focus on keeping certain SKUs in stock mm -hmm. and then slowly start adding back subscriptions to yeah. SKUs that once we once we know that, hey, these are going to be prioritized, you can subscribe to these yeah. SKUs. I was, um, this is gonna seem uh, unrelated, but you'll see how it's related in a second. I was driving by um, the mall, I guess like two or three nights ago to grab like um, some Christmas presents. And I was driving by Chick-fil-A and there's a fucking giant line at Chick-fil-A. I know where you're going, right? yeah. And I haven't, like, I, I've been to Chick-fil-A maybe once or twice down in the States. I've never gone to the one here. And as I was driving by, I, was, I told Samantha, I'm like, fuck, like, the line is, like, crazy at Chick-fil-A, whatever. And then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, like, what, what is it that makes Chick-fil-A, like, so popular? And, and I thought to myself, I'm like, Chick-fil-A, and I actually ended up doing, like, a little bit of research afterwards. Chick-fil-A earns three times the amount of revenue per store on average than McDonald's. Mm. Isn't that fucking wild? Yeah. Like three times yeah. the amount of revenue per store. Yeah. Now McDonald's is all about like, they're a real estate company. If you've ever yeah. heard this and that they're all about just like they're everywhere. Yeah. Right. Whereas yeah, Chick-fil-A like they, and you go there, they only have like 10 items. on. Yeah, the I think menu. it's like 12, 12 items yeah. on the menu. And each item is like, perfectly fucking curated yeah. so i ended up reading about like why the chick-fil-a founder won and what's also crazy that they do three times the amount of revenue is that they're, they're closed, clo on closed on fucking yeah. sundays yeah right yeah so they, they're removing what's that 14 percent of their days that they could be selling yeah and arguably a day that a lot of people would want to go out yeah. to eat grab some lunch maybe yeah. they're shopping whatever and so 
and they're still doing that much. And so it just kind of like reinforced my thought process in terms of the importance of narrowing down. And I, I think this is a, it, it, we're at a different stage, I feel like, in the company than early on. Early mm-hmm. on, I felt like you were just trying to, like, when someone gets to the website, you want them to be able to buy everything. Yeah. And you weren't making that much product of everything, and everything was done manually. So you could make a thousand yeah. different SKUs. Whereas now that we're trying to get more like volume and, and, yeah. and essentially economies of scale. Yeah. And um, the other thing too is that the larger an organization gets and an operation gets, the more chances that something go, can go wrong yeah. that someone might not detect. Yeah. Right. Think about five years ago when you're operating this business, you knew every single fucking little yeah. thing going on. Now there's a lot of stuff that just happens yeah. that is all behind the scenes from your perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. And so what what I was thinking about, another one I was reading about in the what I went to like home that night and was looking it up, is that Chick-fil-A finds that the amount of errors and returns and complaints and all that type of stuff is way lower because they, one, like people know that what they're getting because there's only like a few items, right? So people's like recurring purchases of that specific item, item is a lot higher. But then also the amount of complaints is a lot lower because the people that are making it, like you only need to learn how to make fucking 12 things <laughs> yeah. and you just fucking pump those out, yeah. right? It kind of reinforced my <laughs> thinking of, of the importance of narrowing down our like the number of products that we're offering and so not necessarily like taking them off sale but one we've already implemented the kind of strategy of always having our best sellers in stock and over the last couple of months it's worked very well yeah right but now the next shift that i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust the subscriptions so that people are only going to be able to subscribe for the best selling products that never get sold out yeah right because that way because if you have to like if you think if you sign up for a subscription for whatever our, our alcar or something yeah. some some product that actually we have we have a good stocking of that but maybe caffeine tablets or mm-hmm. something that's kind of inconsistent then what happens is that you might have a one that should be consistent though it will be from now yeah. on because we ordered a fuck ton of caffeine yeah. tabs now but for a little while it was inconsistent with mm-hmm. our supply of them mm-hmm. and so what happens is that you have a 150 200 dollar order that's scheduled for three orders in a row like think about how great that is for like, yeah. the value of our, our of our business and all of a sudden each of those orders can't go out at all mm-hmm. right so our customer service does a good job sometimes of being able to manually go in, adjust the subscriptions, all that. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a lawyer. Yeah, but I, th- I think yeah, it's just going to be super important to kind of like adjust the subscriptions so that that doesn't keep happening. Yeah, awesome. Okay.